some particular cases of Mohr circles. Let's go back to the case of the 3D uh, Mohr circle. You, I will recall that uh, for constructing that, we just play sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. This is the order because they are supposed to be 1, sigma 1 larger than sigma 2, larger than sigma 3. And then we construct the Mohr circle. Okay? By the way, in 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 in, in uh, solid in, in soil mechanics case, sigma one would be minus sigma three, sigma two would be minus sigma uh, would be minus sigma two, and sigma three would be minus sigma one, right? So finally, the construction would be the same. The the, set, the more circle would be placed in 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 the, in the negative side, but it will be also the same by threshing a circle that joins sigma 1, sigma 2 is centered at the, at the sigma axis. One circle that joins sigma 2, sigma 3 is centered at the y axis. And one circle that joins sigma 1, sigma 3 is centered at the, uh, centered at the sigma axis. Then the intermediate space is what is called the feasible space, where all stress states in any plane should be. OK? Well, what happened in the case of hydrostatic states of, stre of stress? We also call an isotropic stress state. Remember? Remember that concept? Isotropic stress state is the case in which the three principal stresses are equal to each other. I was that's the same. So okay, what would be the construction of the Bohr circle here? Well, I take sigma one, I place the sigma two point, I place the sigma three point, and I join sigma one with sigma two, what do I obtain? The circle is a point. If I join sigma two with sigma three, what do I obtain? The circle is a point. So the three circles is a point, and the only feasible point is a point. So that means that all in all planes, in all planes, the stress state would be always the same. That's what characterizes the isotropic state. In all planes, in all planes, the stress state is the same, and the representative uh, circle, the representative uh, more circle, is just a point, a point on the sigma axis. Okay. That is for the, that's quite important. So, I mean, the, uh, several times we have just to, well, when we talk about the hydrostatic state of stress, we just think that the Mohr circle is just a point. The three principal stresses are equal. So what about, you remember that we also talked about a new concept, which was that any stress tensor can be split into the spherical part, which is an isotropic tensor like that, uh, where the, the stress the stress of this over there is the one third of the trace, okay? Sigma one plus sigma two plus sigma three divided by, by three, plus the remaining part, which is called the deviatoric stress, okay? So what about the principal directions of sigma, sigma spherical, and sigma plus? Look, s imagine that sigma has some principal stresses, okay? Look, what are the principal stresses, the principal directions in a spherical or a hydrostatic stress tensor? That's a typical question of, of exam. What are the principal directions in hydrostatic stress cases? So those planes in which tangential uh, stresses are zero. All of them. All of them. Okay? So in other words, the, the, imagine that now we diagonalize sigma. We obtain a diagonal vector, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 in the diagonal. Okay? What is that diagonal? Well, this would be a diagonal vector, as always it, sigma spherical, sigma spherical, sigma spherical. Uh, okay? And so that sigma, which is the difference of the, that, would have also the same, the difference of sigma 1 minus sigma measures, sigma mean, Sigma 2, sigma prime 2 would be sigma 2 minus sigma min. Sigma prime 3 would be sigma 3 minus sigma min. So we can say something. That diagonal, that that, that vector, that tensor, the deviatoric stress tensor, diagonalizes in the same direction than sigma. If this is diagonal, since this is always diagonal, the difference of this and that in that sense, in that, in that, in that direction would be always diagonal. So that's the first properties. The deviatoric part of the stresses tensor diagonalizes in the same principal directions than the original one. And what about the principal stresses? Well, imagine that this is diagonalized, this is diagonalized, this is diagonalized, then 
sigma 1 would be the principal stress, the first component 1, 1, would be component 1, 1 of this, which is uh, uh, the average stress, mean stress, sigma m, plus sigma prime 1. Sigma 2 is sigma m plus sigma prime 2. Sigma 3 equals sigma m plus sigma prime 3. So, again, if I have the first principal stresses of the original tensor, the principal stresses of the corresponding deviatoric counterpart is just the difference of this minus the mean stress, which is, by the way, the mean value of sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3. Okay? So what about the Bohr circle? Well, imagine that I have sigma 1 this, sigma 2 this, sigma 3 this. Okay? And then I construct the Bohr circle. Blam, blam, blam. This is the Bohr circle. This is the physical zone. So how would be sigma prime 1, sigma prime 2, sigma prime 3? Well, I have to, su to subtract to every one of these three the same amount, the same quantity. So imagine that this is the mean stress, sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3. Then I have sigma prime 1 would be that 1 minus that distance, sigma prime 1. Sigma 2 would be the 1 minus that distance. Sigma 3 would be that minus that distance. Okay? So they have been shifted back the same amount. So the construction of the circle would be would provide a circle which is similar in terms of, of, of size, but translated, shifted in a quantity sigma m. Okay? So what, what can I say, for instance, if I wonder, according to this, having this construction in mind, about the maximum tangential st deviatoric stress, what is the relation? Question of exam. What is the relation of the maximum tensile stress of a stress tensor in, in, the maxi in all planes of the stress tensor and its deviatory counterpart? What can I say? What is the maximum stress, uh, the tangential stress in the original deviatory tensor? That one, which is sigma 1 plus sigma 3 divided by 2. Okay? What is the maximum principal stress in the deviatory counterpart? That one. Principal, no, tangential stress. Tangential. So they are equal. Okay? So the deviatoric part of the stress and the original of the stress tensor and the original stress tensor don't change or have the same value for the maximum tangential stress in, every plane, in any plane. Okay? Some properties. What is the relation if I know sigma prime 1, sigma prime 2, sigma prime 3, what is the relay of the corresponding sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3? Well, it just shifts in them a quantity, which is the mean stress. Okay? And then there is another case, which is quite uh, interesting to, to mention, which is refers to 2D cases. What is called a pure shear state of stress. A pure shear stress of a state is that, graphically, that there are some couple of directions, orthogonal directions, where the corresponding planes are just subjected to tangential stress. Okay? Uh, look, they have to be orthogonal. Okay? So if the stress tensor allows this construction from a certain planes, by in certain planes, orthogonal planes, where these orthogonal planes are just subjected to tangential stresses. Okay? So what is the more circle of that? Well, let's start using the, uh, uh, the concepts we already know. This plane here, what is the representative point? What is the representative point in the more circle, in the more space, sigma tau? Normal stress is, normal stress is, tangential stress is, is minus tau prime, right? minus tau star. So that's the point. The first objective point is that. What about that plane? Normal stress, zero. Tangential stress, positive, positive tau. So that's the relative. May I construct the Mohr circle after this? My answer is yes. By joining these are two orthogonal planes, by joining those planes, the intersection point, which is a zero, provides the Mohr circle, and then by tracing a circle of radius tau star, then modulus of tau star, okay, then I obtain this is the representative point of a pure shear state of a stress uh, case. 
It's a more circle which is centered into the origin. Into the origin. And we do exams for, uh, with, the, with the problem for that. By the way, could you guess a way to finding the pole of this circle? How would you find the pole? Well, if I know, imagine that this is 45 degrees. It's not signal here, right? If I know the direction of that angle, it's 45 degrees, this is the representative point of that plane, that plane is represented by that. So the pole should be in a line which is inclined according to this trace, right? So if the angle is, is 45, the pole should be placed here. So this is the pole, okay? And just for checking, if I trace through the pole a plane which is perpend uh, uh, that follows the trace of this plane, okay, I would, I would have to intersect there's more circles into the representative point of this plane. So I trace for the, the pole and a, a, a line like that, I intersect the point with this gear, which is, by the way, the representative point of that. Mm -hmm. the, so the pole is that, and it fulfills it. So there's a pure shear of stress. And look that in this case, the principal stresses are equal and negative and equal in terms of absolute value, but change the sign. So sigma one, is by construction the modulus of tau star, and sigma two is minus the modulus of tau star, which is the radius. Okay, so these are constructions, useful constructions for the the the, the Mohr circle. Useful particular 